welcome to the training, learning, and development community. Thanks for popping in today. Um, got a few people in the live audience already. I saw J Rock uh, chatting away, uh, part of the live group. Um, hey, Kim, uh, and AJ Rock, Vanessa, Cheryl. Um, great to see you guys. Thanks for, for dropping in. And, and I'm sure that uh, the crowd will get a little bigger as we get going. Um, so I'm really excited today to be doing this broadcast because we had a couple cancellations last week, so we didn't do anything. And I think in the, what, nearly three years that we've been doing TLDC, we've never had a week off. So that was really, really weird, not doing any broadcasts. And so um, getting back into the swing of things, uh, I'm very excited. And we have a great guest, Dorota, who is um, a, a new member of TLDC and uh i'm looking forward to this conversation because she's um been all over the world she's originally from poland and i want to talk about her experiences with that as well as of course answer all of the questions in the q a area that we have in there so um thanks for being with us today dorota thank you for inviting me yeah. thanks for it. Yeah. and hello everyone and thank you for joining it's a pleasure <laughs> <laughs> so um Let's sort of talk about your background, just to start out with. Um, you work at um, MNF, right? And you're MNP. in Toronto now. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. what was it? MNP. Yeah, MNP, yeah. MNP. <laughs> and you're in Toronto, sorry about yeah. that. And tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, well, so my background is, um, I started actually with recruitment and HR, and then after some time I discovered L&D. Uh, so I have about five years of experience in um, L&D uh, and instructional design. Um, and my role was quite diverse. So uh, I did everything from needs analysis, design, implementation and evaluation. Um, and then last year I moved, I moved to Toronto, Canada um, and I found a job at MNP as a learning and development specialist. Um, but unfortunately, after some time due to COVID, my job was, um, I was put on a temporal leave of absence. Uh, so I'm on a job market again, uh, but I'm still involved in many um, pro bono and volunteer L&D projects, which I'm excited about. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's great. So you're actually, but you're looking, so you're looking for work right now. Yes. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Well, I mean, not good, but we're, let's, we'll help you with that. Let's see if we can... Um, we can we let's let's see if we might be able to uh, to open some doors for you. I mean, that's one of the things that I, I hope that TLDC can do for a lot of folks out there, especially now, is mm -hmm. um, just to just to find employment because it seems like there is demand out there, and you just got to get your name out. So hopefully this will help. <laughs> okay, so so you're in Toronto now, and let's see, you're from originally in Poland. Yeah. But you had like kind of a journey. You've been to quite a few different countries. Was it, w weren't you in, in France for a little while or was it yeah. Spain? I, can you talk a little bit about that? I'd love to hear just that story because I admire it so much. I've always wanted to travel extensively, but um, never really had the opportunity. So, so tell us, how, yeah. what, was your, what was your journey like? Yeah, um, so I was born and raised in Poland, but I always, I've been always curious about other cultures and trying to meet people from other cultures and uh, other countries. And then for my university, for my bachelor, I moved across the country away from my family and friends um, to the western side of the country. Um, the city was called Wrocław. Um, and right there, it's quite multinational. Um, city a lot of international students and um this encouraged me even more to travel and discover more um and i applied in the meantime i applied for a university exchange it was called erasmus um and i spent one year in paris in france um and um so i was studying there and at the end i was able to find an internship uh, for the summer because uh, i really wanted to improve my french uh, and then I came back to Poland for about a year to finish my degree. And then uh, I moved to Dublin, to Ireland, because uh, I still wanted to discover more, probably did my master in an English speaking country and uh, learn more because I knew that probably like Western side of the Europe is more 
advanced in terms of career opportunities, different projects and um, education. Um, so I spent in Dublin in Ireland about four years and this is the city where I discovered something like LND. So I, I've never heard about LND learning and development or instructional design before. Um, but I loved it from the first moment. Um, and then after a few years, um, I wanted to discover even more and I enjoyed living in Dublin. Uh, there are a few things that I don't really enjoy among other things, weather, because <laughs> it's raining all the time in Dublin. Um, so uh, I did my research a bit and decided to move to Toronto. Uh, I applied for a permanent visa and it was quite um, easy for me to get accepted because of the experience that they were looking for and education. Uh, and I moved here last year. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And we were talking earlier about how much you love it there in Toronto. And, yeah. um, and J-Rock is saying trading rain for snow, but but we were just talking, ah. <laughs> and I were talking before. She's saying that it's really, really hot over there right now. Yes. Which kind of surprises me. And, um, you know, a typical American, I have no idea what 30 degrees Celsius is in Fahrenheit. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> oh, so in Fahrenheit, um, I would say huh, maybe 70 or 80. Yeah. No, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I it, it's it hot. somewhere around there. I figured somewhere here in Northern California, it's still like, it's really, really low seventies, but it's gorgeous out. It's really, really nice, mm -hmm. but that's great. And that, you know, you have beaches over there that you go to when the weather is warm and um, that's fantastic. So maybe um, not so much snow there, J-Rock. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's amazing. You went, you know, from Poland to, to, to France, to Ireland, and now you're in Toronto in Canada. I'm sure. Have you ever been to the United States? Not yet. That was my plan for this year, but unfortunately, I have to wait a bit Probably more. <laughs> better to wait. Yeah, you might yeah. want to wait for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. so let's get into some of these questions. We have like uh, about what twenty something minutes, and we'll we'll get in there and just let's find out more about Dorota. What? So, is there anything in particular you're doing some pro bono work? What? what so, what exactly are you working on right now? Mm -hmm. um, I would say one of the biggest projects that I work on is implementing um, onboarding and orientation program for one of the NGOs that I volunteer for. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been interesting uh, because the organization is completely remote and volunteer based. So they have volunteers mostly in Canada and US, but also uh, in, I guess, in India. And some people are also based in Europe. Uh, so it's a challenge. <laughs> um, so for the last few months, I've been trying to improve the process and design the templates and some learning experiences for new volunteers. Um, so probably that's the biggest thing that I work on so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would say other things, maybe like my personal projects. Um, I just published my website. So, um, it actually happened. Um, so I came across Kara North. You probably know her. Um, she's, uh, her. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so about two months ago, she ran an ID how to create a portfolio website for um, instructional designers. And I joined it. It was like four days. Um, and then it gave me this push to actually create my website for my portfolio. I thought, OK, now I have the time. And possibly it will um, encourage recruiters to call me back more often. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I worked on that and recently published it. Um, it was completely with free tools. Like I didn't spend anything on it. Uh, I did everything like the contents, learned what WordPress. And so it was a big learning for me. Um, yeah, what's, the, what's, yeah. the, what's the what's the what's the uh, URL for it? I've posted in. Um... It in the chat. Um, it's uh, Dorota, so my name, Dorota, uh, learning expert dot wordpress dot com. Yeah, I think I actually saw it and yeah, look great. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, it was excellent. Okay, let me go ahead. I'm just going to drop that in there so people can check it out, get to know you a little bit more. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> No, great. That's that's awesome. And and it really is. I mean, I think that 
if you are doing, I mean, every, basically if you are, if, if, especially if you're looking for work, you definitely need to have a website and, mm -hmm. um, and a portfolio going. So um, that's fantastic that you've got that going. Um, so in the past, everything that you've done, is there a particular project that you're especially proud of that you've worked on? Um, yes, um, I would say that probably it's um, organizing. So it was a huge project and it was the first time I had so much responsibility over something and my role was actually a project lead. So I was involved in uh, naming it, in the research and implementation, everything from the scratch to from from the beginning to the end, um, it was actually organizing um, national one day conference, a lengthy conference for um, CEOs, senior managers, HR professionals, and LND people. Um, so we had a full day of learning with various speakers. Uh, it was in a hotel. Uh, we had a sketch artist, videographer, photographer. So there are many different parts that I was involved in. I also managed the event on the day. Uh, it took me about four months to design it, um, but the event went great. Uh, people were happy with that and uh, very excited. It was a fun event. We also had Zumba, like 10, 15 minutes Zumba <laughs> for wow. people during the day. Um, so I would say it was a huge success. Um, so that was probably one of the projects that I'm I'm proud of. Yeah. Wow! When was that? When when did you do that event? Um, I think it was last year in at the end of March, beginning of April. Mm -hmm. And where was it? Uh, in Ireland, in Dublin. Excellent! Wow. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm probably going to have to. Um, once conferences, live face-to-face -face conferences start happening again, I'll probably hit you up because, you know, that's what TLDC had started as a, as a, as a conference series. And, oh, okay. um, yeah, and we didn't have one this year just because I was kind of putting it off, wanting to see sort of how things were shaping up and then definitely had to postpone it because of, of um, COVID-19. But mm -hmm. um, once things get going again, um, maybe I'll, I'll contact you for some ideas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, sure. is you know, I, I did it for years and years and years at the, at the e-learning guild. So, um, I definitely mm -hmm. love producing those things. Yeah. So, um, so you're an event producer. Are there any other, um, jobs that you've worked in your past? Um, yeah. Um, well, so it was, well, I would say as, many young people i was involved in this entry level jobs or so i was a banter bartender for a while um just a short while and then but i would say one of my first jobs was actually um being a hostess so i was giving out the leaflets in the city of the town when i was like back in poland um and then what else i did um i was a babysitter um I also replaced a friend of mine uh, to be a housemaid for about for about a month. She she mm -hmm. had to go somewhere, so I replaced her. And then um, I started in HR as an HR assistant, so kind of like admin kind yeah. of jobs. Um, and then recruitment, and from a recruitment, that was my last job in Poland. Um, and then when I moved to Ireland, I started working in L&D. Wow. Okay. I, you know, I just really love, I love hearing about what people have done in their past just because it kind of, you know, it gives you sort of the ability to connect to people in, 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 in a certain way, just because, you know, especially if you're somebody like, like me that has kind of done similar things, worked at restaurants and worked at cafes and, and things like that, then, you know, like you have sort of a similar path to other people and it just um, makes that connection um, that much more relevant as, you know, for mm -hmm. me anyway. Um, but if you weren't an L and D professional, what do you think you'd be? Well, um, well, at that time I, well, it, it's, it's kind of a tricky question, but I think it will be like in some, something, uh, quite similar. Um, so I would say uh, recruitment, probably, yeah. just because when I left Poland, it was in recruitment. Um, 
but I actually really enjoy teaching others. And that was something that I discovered when I was really young. And I, um, I was thinking to become a teacher, but uh, something that it, like teacher job in Poland, it's really poorly paid. So it's like, yeah. mm, I, I'm not sure if I'm not, uh, if I'm as committed to it, <laughs> you know, but I was always into education and development. So I would say it will be either recruitment um, or maybe um, a trainer or um, a lecturer um right. yeah something around that i would say yeah i've heard that so many times like from teachers that you know that are wanting to make money and so that they kind of look at instructional design as potentially a way to uh you know, to, <laughs> to, to, to 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 keep themselves um you know um to to, to have to be able to make a decent living is, is to move into instructional design i don't know how accurate that is but Anyway, all right. So we now we have like a question from J Rock here that just popped up. Um, how would you say remote onboarding is different than in in person? Do you have an opinion on that? Like mm -hmm. what that's like doing that now? Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, I would say to make it more um, as efficient as in person onboarding, you have to have more platforms to support the new joiners in your company. And I would say that's the biggest issue and also the engagement. Um, so when it's face to face, it's easy to talk to people, to ask them personal questions. But sometimes in an online setup, it's really uh, not that appropriate. <laughs> yeah. So you have to find ways to engage them and involve and train them and not only from the online side, you want to be more personal. So, so probably like virtual training um, will be better. So that's something that I actually do right now. Um, I'm creating the content and presentation to um, and facilitation sessions to involve learners from start and then mapping all the processes. I would say it's more complicated just because you need to find the ways how everything will work. Uh, and how you communicate with people. Um, so that that's really tricky. I would say that uh, possibly implementing Slack or Microsoft Teams seem to be more and more popular. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say that's the, that's the biggest difference. Um, yeah. Is there anything specific on the engagement side that you've done that's kind of helped you? Mm. Um, one side, but it's probably something similar to face to face. Um, it's having a body and actually uh, having a body program. So uh, assigning someone to this new joiner uh, who would support them not only from the on the, on, on the job training, but also from the being as a friend or advisor, how to communicating the company, how things work and things like that. Um, yes. And then what else? Um, so again, I would say like having processes and systems. I know it sounds boring, but you have to be very clear who is doing what because um, otherwise people will be lost. So even providing uh, guideline, guidelines and templates and point of contact to managers and supervisors to yeah. tell them, okay, you have to create like 60, uh, 30, 60, 90 day plans for your people, especially when they're new. Um, so they feel they have a goal and there's someone to review those goals with them. No, that's great. I, I think that it, it feels like structure is the key right now for, for a mm -hmm. lot of people just being able to, to rely on that just um, uh, because things are just changing so much and, um, you know, and, and there are so many different things that get thrown at you during the day that if you have mm -hmm. a structure to rely on, it just helps you that much more to, to be able to, to stay productive and, and get things done. Excellent. So, um, what do you love about L and D? What what exactly like drew you to it? Why 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 did you decide to, to to take this on? Yeah. I'd say um, a variety of tasks and skills you have to master. Um, so um, it's probably the first time when I see that 
uh, the tasks that I do are so diverse. Like you have to be a teacher, a researcher, um, a speaker, a trainer, coach sometimes, um, graphic designer, content developer, content writer, um, even e even event manager or co coordinator, uh, people manager sometimes when you have your own team. So there are so many things and skills that you have to develop. Um, and that's something that I also love about LND, that there's always something new that I discover. Um, and mastering your skills is very important if you want to stay on the top and if you want to call yourself an expert or specialist it's it's very crucial um but also the fact that i feel that my job um has an impact and meaning um and it's about people so i love to be surrounded by people i love to have the conversation with people i love to support them and when i see that my job is making a difference it's not about it just you know sitting in front of my pc and writing a report that's something that i couldn't i just know i couldn't do um i i love being involved with people and support them and help them um so all those things, that's something that I really enjoy. And then seeing people grow or even feeling better, that's also really important. Um, that's that's just making my day, my day yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I think that's one of the reasons why I love this particular audience. And and, and, and L&D is just universally, it feels like most everybody that I come across is sort of the same way. And mm -hmm. I think that if there's anything that's going to get us through the, these times, it's going to be, you know, that attitude, um, because I think education is, is, is the key to everything at this point. And, um, and so I love hearing that. I love hearing that, you know, you're just trying to help people reach their potential. And um, that's so admirable. Um, is there a person or something that keeps you inspired to, that just keeps you going like, uh, you know, from, from day to day? Do you have anybody you'd mention or a situation or a thought that keeps you inspired? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it will be really hard to have just one person or one situation to uh, uh, inspire me. Um, but I would say uh, my LinkedIn network um, or even people that I follow, it's very broad. And even thanks to podcasts like this, I got to know people and more experts in a given area, and I tend to follow them. Um, and if we had a chance to talk, I add people in because I, I just love learning from people. And one of them, I mentioned Kara North, she's adding all the time some kind of content. Um, she's very supportive, uh, sharing articles or what others publish or other podcasts. So um, I love to follow people like that and yeah. that keeps me inspired and it motivates me to do more, to learn more. Cause it's, it's interesting, you know, like L and D, um, of course you have to be picky sometimes in terms of the content, cause sometimes it's just very generic and you meet those people who just wants to sell, uh, sell something <laughs> to you. Uh, but most of the time it's not the case. Um, so I would say my connections and LinkedIn, but also attending webinars when I can talk with people like here, even in the comments, people can still talk with each other and that keeps me motivating. And even when I work something on my own uh, at my home, you know, I'm not surrounded by people that actually keeps me motivating that something is happening. There's a conversation going on somewhere. Um, yeah. No, that's great. That's great to hear that. I'm, you know, and I, I hope that that's kind of, you know, and that's the whole point of TLDC in a lot of ways is that you may not need to like, you know, to, to be involved with TLDC every day, but just as long as, you know, we're here whenever you do need to, you know, to talk to people, that's to me, that's what's the, what's most important. So, and, um, and I'll let Kara know that, uh, that you inspire her too. <laughs> <laughs> So before you had started out in, in L and D, was there anything like, is there anything you wish you had known before you had got into this before um, you started learning about L and D when you were in, 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 in Ireland? Um, I would say 
maybe at the time if I could go back in time, I would attend more um, events and conferences and I would be more eager to connect with people. I mean, I'm still, I, I love to talk to people, but um, even kind of maybe not forcing myself, but um, just reaching out on LinkedIn because sometimes I even review different profiles um, and someone can inspire me. Uh, so right now, if it happens, I tend to either follow them or reach out. Um, and I think that's something that I had to learn um, or maybe discover <laughs> that it's very important to build your network, um, especially around L&D uh, with people in your profession. Um, so that's something that I, I wish I could change, um, but also um, constantly improving my skills. So even if I have a full-time job somewhere, um, I shouldn't stop myself from learning other technologies or tools or either authoring tools or video creating tools, uh, you know, constantly like improving and discovering new things. It's really important because then you can implement it in your work. Um, or even if there's a point where you have to or you want to change your ch change something in your work or apply for something else or you're offered a new job you're still still on the top of your skills and different te technologies, what's happening. And I think even having connections that can help you with that, either on LinkedIn or in the associations or communities like TLBC or ATD or I4PL in Canada, um, that's a great way to actually do that, to hear what's happening um, and to learn more instead of just you know, I, I know it's easy when you're when you when we work full time and we are tired, but sometimes even pushing ourselves to do some kind of research and learn something. That's a that's a big thing. That's great, Dorota. I'm actually going to I'm going to have to clip that one. And every time we have a new instructional designer like pop into DLC, TLDC, I'll just uh, send them what you just said. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. And I think, you know, like. Um, I used to love like the conference experience. Just, I loved it. It was always so fun. And especially because you would just sort of see people really blossom um, in that environment because they would find mm -hmm. other people that were just like them. They were like, I'm not alone. I, you know, I'm having all these challenges and here's somebody else who's kind of the same thing. And, and um, that was one of the best feelings, um, you know, being a conference producer is just to kind of witness that. And, mm -hmm. and I think that I try to take that a little bit into TLDC and I have some other plans where I'm just going to try to nurture that a little bit more because I do think that, especially in, in times of isolation that we're sort of living through that being mm -hmm. able to have tools like that and be able to, to talk to other people about sort of your own challenges and just, you know, and just feel like you've got company. Um, that's a really, really important thing. All right. So best compliment you've ever received. Mm, I was thinking about that <laughs> when you sent me the question, but um, I think it was a compliment given by my former manager. Um, so I was working at one company for about three years and a half, and I had the same manager for the for this whole time. And um, like at some point, he told me that I'm the easiest person to he ever he has ever worked with. And that I'm very like um, loyal, uh, reliable, and trustworthy, and that was something I would say it, it was a big thing for me because for this whole time we shared the same office space, and at some point we were like desk to desk. <laughs> so hearing something like that from your manager, I think, um, yeah, I would say that that was the biggest compliment for me. Awesome. No, that's great, and. Dorota, I have to say that as soon as this is done and I have this posted, you need to make sure that um, you get this out to, you know, any any people that are potentially looking to hire you. I think that they would um, definitely appreciate um, seeing what you've had to say so far. And OK, so I'm going to have to wrap things up here, but we do have like there's a series of questions from Randy that are um, that are in the Q&A area. And I'm going to. Um, I'm going to um, hit you up on, on these, okay, because uh, mm -hmm. Randy posted them. So for those who are in between jobs in L&D like yourself, what are a few tips you'd recommend for improving their skills to make them more employable? Got any 
You got any tips for that? Yeah, I would say I have um, something that I recently discovered. There are not as many jobs for, at least in Canada, I'm based in Toronto. Um, uh, I noticed that there are not as many L&D jobs, like general jobs, but more a lot about um, ID, so in, into instructional design. So I would say um, developing your skills in that um, in that field. So what I do when I review different jobs that are appearing, um, I look at the skills that I don't have. So for example, right now on my list is Camtasia. Um, so that's something that I don't know. I don't know this platform. I know how it works. I attended a webinar um, with one of the speakers, how it works in general, but that's something that I want to learn just because of that. So I would say going to job descriptions and reading, okay, what the employers are looking for and then learning those skills. And some of those platforms are actually for free for the first like 30 days. So we can try it out. Um, and then, um, start learning with either um, lynda.com or there's some, you know, a few other uh, free online courses that you can just, or, or even communities like eLearning Heroes, they're great for um, Articulate Storyline. Um, and even the bloggers or people who have, who has their own website, they read, most of the time they run um, free webinars where they teach you different tricks with uh various platforms so i would say that's the one thing um other things um that's something that also i did um so i decided finally to uh start ctdp accreditation uh it's mm -hmm. similar to american cptd i think mm -hmm. yeah i'm not sure <laughs> um training industry no wait no what is that um okay anyway yeah, yeah it's by atd yeah um so it's for this like certified training and development professional right, um right. so that's something that will also give you uh, an advantage um is that something that probably other candidates won't have maybe some of them but others won't um because it's quite pricey but if you have some budget to invest in that i would say just do it um and then having your portfolio website um just a day after i uh publish it i started getting some calls <laughs> i'm not sure if that was because of that i i think it it might be um just because before it was really like quiet um so i think having your portfolio um and there are many different uh free tools that you can use um mm -hmm like free WordPress, you just need to learn it. Um, yeah, you know, and, and Randy actually has a, a good follow-up question here since we're we're talking about this right now. Why did you choose WordPress for your portfolio? Um, I would say because, so I was looking for free tools and I wasn't sure if I want to invest um, any money in that. And I was looking into different platforms and WordPress seemed uh, as the best way to do it. Yeah. Uh, it's not as complicated and I don't know, I'm not an um, IT developer, so I know nothing <laughs> about like CSS, HTML or other um, mm -hmm. things. Um, and WordPress seemed quite easy. Maybe after some time when I see the value, I will invest in the paid version or maybe um, some website builders because I know that they're um some ways to improve your website uh but you have to pay um so and i didn't want to actually invest because i was i wasn't sure if it will work um so if it's worth it <laughs> to yeah, actually it's a great pay. way to get started absolutely it's a great way to yeah. get started i've built like tons of wordpress sites in the past and it's a great way to learn and then once you're ready you know or have the budget to be able to pay for something then you can just migrate it um pretty easily yeah. so i think it's, it's it's really a good start um, now last question, um, besides TLDC, and this one's from Randy too, besides TLDC, um, do you have any other go-to podcasts? Mm, podcast. Um, well, so what I do, um, when I follow different people on, um, LinkedIn, sometimes they publish podcasts that I haven't 
heard about. I don't know particular names, uh, but most of the time I attend um, ATD podcasts. Um, so that's the Association of Training and Development, that's the American one. And then I4PL, that's the Institute for Performance and Learning, it's in Canada. Um, so I'm a member and I attend different webinars, but also once people publish something on LinkedIn, most of the time I join. So sometimes I join um, some kind of webcasts or meetings, even in Australia, right, <laughs> in the yeah. UK. So um, it's just to keep um, diversity. So uh, it's possible that in other countries, they, they use something else. So thanks to that, I can my, improve my skills and um yeah excellent okay no that's great i love it um and that's it we're we're, we're out of time and um dorota thank you so much for doing this you you've shared some 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 great information with us it's so good to know you now do you do any translation work at all i know a couple people that like have like localization and translation services that are in the L and D space I don't oh. know if that's something you'd be interested in at all. Should I? Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I haven't heard about that, but um, yeah, you, you see, like I learned something new. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I, I know Sonia Farini, who is a regular in TLD chat, is um, she always seems to be looking for people that might, you know, um, mm -hmm. that might be a good connection. And then I've been talking with a friend of mine from Ingenuity who um, Adam Ealing and their local local localization and translation service. Um, in fact, I'm going to try to have him as a guest on soon. So maybe I can introduce you and you guys, if you know anything, any of the other attendees out there, if you know of, uh, of anything that might be um, that, that might work for Dorota, um, you know, just, uh, just hit her up at, uh, at, at her website and um, let's see if we can get um, her some some opportunities. But Dorota, thanks again for doing this today. So glad you were able to take the time out of your day and uh, and do a showcase. Thanks for being a part of TLDC. And um, everybody, Thursday we're doing some. You know, we're we're doing a uh, kind of an, a a little bit of an intense um, broadcast where we're talking about the age of distraction and the attention economy and and learning in the time of COVID, which. I've been gathering my notes about that. It's a community discussion, so I'd appreciate if anybody who attends, if you had any feedback, you know, we could bring you on camera and stuff. But uh, that should be a pretty good one on Thursday, I think. And uh, other than that, we'll see you in TLD chat um, on Slack. And um, and thanks again for, for coming Thank in. And yeah, thanks, you guys. All right, you guys. Um, and I'm going to have to check over through the chat. I wanted to pop into chat so many times, but I didn't want to distract Dorota with anything. <laughs> it was great talking to you guys, um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Thank you all. Bye. Bye-bye.